This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Let's go see a volcano. If you're new here to the content of Sorella in Iceland, hello and welcome. This is not gonna be your average, oh, this is point one, point two, point three. I do vlog style. <laughs> I'm on the trail, I made it. Uh, the excitement has been real already for this trip. It took, takes about an hour to drive from Reykjavik and they close the path at 6 p.m. every night because of tourists doing dumb shit. <laughs> so they started capping people leaving um, to the volcano site at 6 p.m. So I arrived at 6 p.m. and I made it through and on my way, let's go. We've got 9.5 kilometers on very, very, from what I'm hearing, uphill. Pass, and everybody that's walking past me <laughs> looks exhausted. <laughs> It stopped last time. Pretty cool. I remember walking this path. This was all clear. There was no volcano, so this is badass. So here you can see the original volcano, which erupted. Um, the actual first one that ever started was like right down there. And then it kept expanding, expanding, expanding until it grew into this bump baby over there. All right. So it's been an hour and 15 minutes, and I think I'm about halfway. So that's actually not bad. It's definitely doable. Very windy. Bring warm clothes. <laughs> Here's some old lava that's hardened that I'm sitting on right now. It's pretty cool. I'm excited to smell the volcano again. I just remembered being here. I was like, oh my god, this I remember the smell so much. And it actually smells really interesting. It's a hard smell to describe. Very much unique volcano smell. So thrilled to be experiencing that. So let's start the reasons as to why I think Iceland is amazing and why I think it's shit to live in. I've been here for eight years and I also want to just like point out that I wouldn't necessarily call myself a typical normal person. <laughs> besides the fact that I'm crazy, but genuinely I don't do normal work. So I don't know if I fully integrated into Icelandic society. Um, so I don't know if this can fully count for a normal person's opinion that chooses to live in this country, but I'm gonna give it anyway, because it has been eight years and I've learned a lot in that time. Someone came up to me at the supermarket the other day and I was feeling really low about Iceland at the time. And she said, you're so lucky to be living in Iceland. And I kind of cried. <laughs> she said that because I want to point out that this country is very very difficult to live in it's like a love and hate relationship and I say this from a point of like even hearing Icelandic people say this there is a serious love hate relationship with this country to the point that Icelandic people feel this because there are things that are so amazing about this place and you cannot find it anywhere else and then there's things that are so frustrating that you don't find anywhere else and you want to strangle these things that happen here so what I would say to anybody that would like to live here that has come here for a holiday a vacation and thought this place is wonderful I'd love to live here how how gorgeous you're so lucky be prepared there are some challenges here <laughs> that are going to test you beyond measure. I honestly think that Iceland is a place that will spit you out if you're not meant to be here and it will push you to the brink of craziness and exhaustion from the weather to the food to the authorities to the system how it works to the lack of sunlight like there's a lot it will push you and it just when you think like you're so fed up and done with it you either choose to stay here and you actually fall in love with the craziness and you accept it or you get spit out and see you later you'll you'll <laughs> you will not want to come back to this country for a long time and i am at this point right now so i think it's an interesting time time to be making a video because it's a very honest perspective of feeling like am i willing to keep going with this country or am i done and is it time to move on it would be a disservice to not start off with one of the most magnificent things that has ever happened to me in my life um, and that is that this country is a creative hub now if you are a creative if you desire to be something somebody in the any industry almost almost any industry maybe not any industry but definitely creativity definitely anything with photography definitely anything acting <clears throat> um, music for sure writing books this is the place to do it why because everybody here is creative this is the highest number of authors per capita anywhere in the world so people are creative why <laughs> because you end up sitting indoors so much 
the weather here by default is just you almost expect it to be bad but you don't even label it when you live here for long enough you don't label it as bad the weather is the weather and that's an amazing thing that as an Australian you know if it's not the best weather you stay inside here you're always prepared for the weather and you don't you don't even almost consider it you're just like oh okay unless it's yellow warnings or storm warnings then you think about it but otherwise the weather is just the weather it's not good or bad it's just the weather so everybody spends a lot of time indoors in this country because of the darkness because of the wind because of the cold not even the cold the wind is really 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 intense if if you have like 10 days a year without an extreme wind that is such a good year <laughs> it's so rare to have no wind days but the payoff is the creativity and i just after 22 years of dreaming to be a musician i you know got stuck in stuck in iceland during covid and i was here for two years basically non-stop for a traveler that's a big deal and I ended up meeting an amazing group of creatives. <laughs> we have a Faroese, two Faroese people, and um, my British friend, and they are producers. So they produced my new music album, which after 22 years of this being a dream, my very first song was launched and it is on my YouTube channel. It's on Spotify if you want to listen to my first new song and what Iceland inspires, like the musical taste, <laughs> that what it brings out in people. There's a link in the bio to find out. It's pretty crazy, pretty, pretty different. Enjoy. Little cute snackaroonie. <laughs> um, I am going to say that the food here is one of the things that is going to test you. If you are okay with having the simplest of meals on repeat all the time, very little fruit and vegetable selection, always checking if the fruit and vegetables are moldy before you buy it and being okay with looking through your tub of blueberries and picking out half of them because they are moldy. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Um, this is a challenge. Now, for an Australian, where fruit and vegetables are endless supply and they're super fresh and delicious. This was an adjustment period. Also the food here, eating out, very disappointing. <laughs> the lamb here is magnificent. The fish is somewhat, if you, if you buy wild caught, it's actually really nice, but the farmed fish like all over the world is really, really average. Um, so that is for sure something that is exceptional in this country. They also grow lettuce here. They have tomatoes and cucumbers, super basic availability. Um, and yeah, eating out is not fun. Like, if you love eating out a lot and it's your thing, whining and dining, you might have like five restaurants that you end up liking. The breakfast scene here is atrocious. <laughs> I'm an Australian. We make the best breakfast in the world, including the best coffee, I'm going to say. And here the breakfast selection is so bad. It's not healthy. You don't have any like, I'm gluten-free. No gluten-free options, no real substitutes of anything, nothing ex exceptional or exploratory for your taste buds. So uh, kiss goodbye any desire to eat fancy in this country. It is a really long way, a really long way. I can smell it. <sighs> I didn't realize how much I missed it until I smelt it and all these memories flooded in when I saw it first time. Oh my God, it smells so good. How would I describe the smell? It's like, well, there's burnt moss because it's burning the moss around it, I would say, like the lava's flowing out and burning moss. So there's that smell, but I think it's, it must be like sulfur. Oh, it's so distinctive. I wish I could bottle it and send it your way. Because you can instantly, the smell shows you this power of Mother Nature. You know that that smell means lava, means it's coming from under the earth. Like right now, I think this one is 16 kilometers down into the earth magma chamber, popping up to the surface. And this one, I think this volcano they're saying is like two or three times bigger than the original one, um, which is massive because that one was huge. And this is still tiny think about this this whole area that we're in i'm probably going to exaggerate and it's not true but i believe that there's volcanoes bigger than this whole entire area that i'm standing in right now that everywhere i can see this would be the inside of the volcano like i know that there's volcanoes that big and so that one's nothing but it's still so big and i found out a statistic right that what we witnessed 
within 24 hours of the volcano starting the very first time I saw it three years ago, that was an occurrence that happened every 6,000 years. And I saw the volcano within 24 hours, every 6,000 years. And we got to experience standing there, seeing it, being so close, one of the first humans to see that and be that close to a volcano. I believe that just beyond this hill is where I'll see the very first bits of the volcano, which I'm really excited for. Also, this volcano now, the pattern that they expect for this volcano is that probably we're gonna have it flowing on and off. So like right now we've had it three years in a row, but this one, this whole area, they think it's gonna be, be active for, I think they said something like 600 or 800 years. We're at the very start of this cycle that is gonna happen for now hundreds of years. And we were the first humans of this cycle to experience this, like it's so rare. When I heard that, I was like, okay, this is a very special volcano, I wanna to get to it. Cause the volcano has actually been erupted now for two weeks. And I was like, eh, I've seen it, I've seen it. Now I'm like, okay, I should probably absorb it. And that's one thing that happens when you live in Iceland. You get desensitized to some of the most magnificent things in nature, so. Cue, right on time, the helicopter. <laughs> Another thing that is a little bit annoying about Iceland is I feel that maybe we're witnessing the downfall of Iceland right in front of our eyes. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, like, I think people are getting a little bit too caught up with how much money there is in tourism right now. And it is being like, I feel like the nature is being exploited for money. And you can see it, like the, the, now, the amount of tours that are everywhere, the amount of like, it's all it is. Iceland, and this is point blank for most people now, Iceland is magnificent nature. <laughs> so you have tourists galore coming in for like three days, five days, like in, out, in, out, like just using it, taking what they need, taking the shot and they're out of Iceland and the people are going along with it. And there's more tours, more hotels, there's cranes everywhere being built up in Reykjavik. Like this is, imagine there's a volcano right there and you want to sit and enjoy it. And you hear that the whole time because it's just, it's money. I'll finish my point in one second, once they're gone. Okay, they are gone. <laughs> now, I just feel that the exploitation of nature for a penny and a like is just getting a little bit out of hand. And now who am I to blame? I still have people that come up to me now or on a regular and say, I came to Iceland because of your videos. I haven't posted about Iceland in like three years. It's a long time and yet my videos about Iceland blew up. I was one of the first YouTubers to, co to cover Iceland to the point that I became the country's biggest YouTuber as an Australian <laughs> with only 1 million subscribers. One, that's quite a bit, but now in comparison to the landscape of YouTube, it's nothing. And that's the point as well of Iceland. If you want to be something and you want to be the biggest in an industry, <laughs> like you can, because the population is 330,000. So you can be exceptional in this country by not really even being that great. I'm just going to throw myself under the bus right now. <laughs> in the eight years that I've been here, I just feel like it's getting worse and worse and worse with the exploitation of nature. And I am, am talking to locals that have lived here for years and years and years and years. Uh, the person that said this to me, they've been here 16 years. They're from Faroe Islands. So they're not native. However, there's like five planes right now and helicopters. It's insane. But what he said, and I can echo that, is the culture of Iceland is being killed for tourism. We have an exceptional, a humongous amount of tourists coming and the country's not still prepared for it. It's starting to become a little bit like Disneyland. We have this stupid zip line that's been put into a location that was just pristine nature and there's a freaking zip line now there. It's like, it's dumb. It's just becoming so cheap in my eyes and I'm sorry to whoever this is offending but um 
I think this is a cycle. So we're going to see people come here. The nature is not going to be so pristine because the amount of tourists there are, there's rubbish. I'm seeing garbage being thrown around now. Not clean. Reykjavik is starting to feel dirty now with people just in and out, in and out, like a quick transaction. There's no nightlife anymore for the locals. There's all the bars and the most amazing nightclubs that were there for the locals that were inspiring art and creativity are now being replaced by hotels. And it's heartbreaking because people that live here, the ones that created Iceland to be so magical and people desiring to come here because, oh, like Icelandic people, Icelandic music, it's so fascinating. Icelandic culture, it feels like it's dying out because everything's getting replaced for the tourism. And so I do think that the cycle is gonna be, oh, Iceland, that's so like yesterday. I went now to this place or this place or this place and people are gonna look for the new novel thing. Iceland will get left behind. People are gonna ignore it, forget about it. There's gonna be way too many empty hotels. And then, and then we're gonna get Iceland back. <laughs> and it's gonna be the cute little elf country that focuses on culture and anything else except for tourism, which is probably exciting. Now, this is my prediction. Who knows if this is actually true. Let's talk about the weather and the dark and light in particular. <laughs> the darkness in winter is intense. It is super intense. It really genuinely is maybe three hours of sort of sunlight. It is hard. You wake up, it's dark. You um, go about your day, you're about to start your day, you think there's gonna be more sunlight and then it disappears and then it's dark again and this goes on for months and months and months so there is this level of hibernation people slow down a lot you're not as productive you have like maybe 60 percent of capacity to exist in the world um, whilst the rest of the world is going about its business and they're super inspired and like look summer or i'm doing this i'm doing this and you're just like i have no energy i'm lethargic um, that is the Icelandic winters and it's beautiful, it's cozy, it's insulated, there's a lot of indoor time at this time, lots of family time, lots of community time, lots of creation time, so there definitely are positives to it. And then, just when you think you're about to lose your mind, you can't handle it anymore, a lot of Icelandic people, lots of locals, they escape for a little while because it is just so intense. Getting away for about a week at least during the middle of the winter is pretty much almost necessary. Um, just as you think you're about to lose your mind, you can't go any more sunlight. Brrr, and then it just keeps going up and up and up and up until you reach 24 hour sunlight, which is so amazing. That makes you go crazy. And right now we're end of, almost end of July. So we are just outside of the 24 hour period. We have a little bit of sort of sunlight, um, darkness I mean. Uh, just around midnight till 2, 3 a.m. So we have a little bit of darkness now. Light enough that I'll still be able to see everything when I'm walking past. It's, I think it's like 8.30 p.m. right now or 9. So that, the light period, <laughs> is spectacular. Um, I'm glad I installed blackout blinds in my house. So all my house I can make it dark because I do actually miss the darkness during the 24 hour sunlight, which is very, very bizarre. So I like the coziness of nighttime, so I've made that possible for myself. But it is one of the weirdest things you're ever gonna experience by, you know, you going to bed at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. or 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and it's light, you can see everything. It's really weird, it's fascinating. It gives you like extra energy, you feel a lot more productive, you feel wide. You feel like you're going a little crazy if there's sun. This is one of the most special things you'll experience. If it's a sunny day on top of like a warm day, you will not find Icelandic people very engaged with whatever you're doing. They're out absorbing sun. The parks are filled and it's so beautiful. And I wish the world could understand, understand how precious that time is for people that live here because we need that. <laughs> we need this top up. We have so little sunshine and so little sun hitting our skin directly that we cherish the warm days when the skin, when the sun touches your skin and you're feeling warmth it's like the simple pleasure that you miss when you live somewhere else. You fully get to experience that here and it's oh, ecstasy. Okay, I'm seeing my very first signs of like lava burning moss. You can see the smoke. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're getting close. We're I think two hours in of, of the hike right now. 
Hello, Fuchsia Sorel here. Just wanted to add to the conversation. One other thing for sure that is very troublesome in this country is the dating scene. If you are single, <laughs> good luck. Because not only is the pool of availability smaller um, for your type of person, but also um, statistically it shows that men are more likely to date foreign women but Icelandic women are much more likely to always end up with an Icelandic person because they want to keep the lineage of Icelandic children so it is so tricky it's like crickets <laughs> so if you do have this cute dream of meeting someone local from Iceland and having Icelandic babies think again because it's likely not going to happen I'm even building up the anticipation for myself because I just heard the volcano and it's just there. I am so excited to see it. But before we get there, one more point. <laughs> I do want to shout out the nature of Iceland because it is so goddamn healing. Are you kidding me? Like even this moss right here, it looks like cottage cheese. It's flawless. It's perfect. And you have little flowers just blooming and doing their best and they look beautiful. <laughs> so the nature here is exceptional. And everywhere you go, it's beautiful. You're in the city, it's beautiful. <laughs> you go drive an hour, it's stunning. Some of the most beautiful, breathtaking landscapes that inspire creativity, that if you're a creative, a visual person, this place is gorgeous. Reykjavik itself, downtown, it is so cute. Downtown area is just filled with what I feel like is Smurf land. It's so adorable and so cute and colorful and during winter it is a thing that keeps your spirits high because it's just gorgeous. <laughs> and I also love how close everything is in this country. My friends, all of them, they live about three to five minutes walk each. Like with that close, we're like, hey, what are you doing? Let's catch up. Hey, you want to go to movies? Let's go. And the movie, the cinema is like one minute walk from us. Everything is so close. So we are connected and we're very close to one another. And that feels really special. There is no such thing as freaking long extended drives to work or back. If unless you live outside of the city, most people live in Reykjavik. So everything's super close. You don't have commuting times, which is very stressful. And for me, this is also a benefit, but consumerism here doesn't really exist as much as anywhere else, especially America. I overheard a conversation the other day, an Icelandic person was saying to, to foreigners, we have two shopping centers in Iceland. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, unless you count the tiny one in Akureyri, then yeah, there's two. <laughs> literally so if you want anything if you're always desperate for the latest and greatest it's not really the place to get it because things are really expensive here and you can't get the full selection so consumerism isn't the forefront of your mind people still look good they dress you know they have a unique style Icelandic people in particular I just vintage and thrift shop and I freaking love it and you get to be whoever you want to be in this country as well especially because it is such a creative hub people don't really judge you for much I mean, I'm sure they do amongst, <laughs> I'm sure I'm being judged, but from what I experience, I don't really feel it. I feel very welcomed. And the Icelandic people as well, it's a good and a bad thing. You wanna speak Icelandic, but everybody speaks English, and then you try Icelandic, and they're like, huh? <laughs> and they'll correct you and just speak English to you. Um, so that, but that's, that one's on me. After being here so long, I still don't speak the language. I still get around everything. I, everything's very easy for me to navigate. Some of the logistical stuff and things, you know, car inspections, all these other things, doctors. I don't really go to the doctor. I'm just giving examples of logistical things. Um, taxes, insurance. Sometimes it's a bit tricky in a foreign language and you don't really understand how things work. So that can get tiring. But I think that comes with the territory of moving abroad to a non, non-primary English speaking place anyway. So. But all in all, my experience of Iceland is so damn grateful because it has taken me through the highest highs and the lowest lows that I'd, I'd never expected this to be possible. Like my career as a YouTuber, photographer, self-portrait photographer, musician, <laughs> none of this ever, 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 ever would have happened if I was somewhere else. This is the country if you want to be somebody creatively this is the place again I'm uh, Australian that is the biggest youtuber in the country and that just seems ridiculous that doesn't make sense I hardly post about Iceland anymore but I'm still it you know so climbing the ladder here is possible so I'm 
forever grateful to what Iceland, again, what's given me. So yeah, a little bit self-centered in that regard. And also I've had to pay the price because my mental health has definitely taken a toll in this country many times, like plummeted to the lowest lows I didn't even know was possible. It's the payoff. It drives you insane so you can create amazing art and experience the most beautiful wonders of the world, which is the volcano right there. Let's go get it. <laughs> better believe that I wasn't gonna forget to shout out the Icelandic people. <laughs> you guys are badass. The way that you live in this country is badass. The way you survive this country is badass. The way you take people in, the way you show them around, your hearts are so big and yet you don't take bullshit, which is one of my favorite, favorite things about you. You're so raw, oh my God. Oh. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> Oh, it's perfect. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Oh my God. It's warm. It feels so nice. It's so nice. <laughs> oh, I love it. I stand absolutely corrected. Everything negative I said about Iceland, wipe it out because it does not matter when you're in the face of this. This is Iceland, baby. This is one of the most spectacular places on earth. It is worth all the hype. It's got its problems. Every place does. But this... Wow. I'm walking back could have never hour maybe a little bit more to go and I was even just thinking I never mentioned like things like the northern lights and how beautiful they are <laughs> I mean I gave a shout out to mother nature what I'm saying is now I'm thinking through what I said in the video it's so dumb it's irrelevant when you compare it to this it's perfect it's perfect to Iceland just do it don't question it Wow! Squarespace is a magnificent tool for business owners and artists like myself to have a beautiful online presence that actually gets results. Let's talk about the features. Exceptional editing interface with Fluid Engine's flexible grid. Place blocks anywhere, even overlapping other blocks, and resize them directly on the page. Of course, there is the Unreal 24-7 customer service that comes with Squarespace as well as the drop-dead gorgeous award-winning designer templates which ensures you look professional even without having an eye for design. You also have complete marketing tools, including email management, top analytics tools to track the performance of your webpage to continue refining and improving the results of your business in real time. Squarespace hosts your content seamlessly, text, videos, and photos, of course, but also audio blogs can be inserted in case you're a podcaster, for example. Squarespace already has powerful e-commerce capabilities, but now with new third-party tools, it can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. That's just a few of the amazing aspects of Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Sorel to get 10% off your first website or domain.